Hi everyone, I'm Jacqueline Bell and thank you so much for joining me today as we talk about solo traveling. So I'm very passionate about solo traveling, primarily because it really helped me identify who I was as this new person, as this person that was better and stronger than who they used to be. It terrified me to no end to find uh, a way to navigate uh, going overseas by myself as a woman, as a young woman and a woman of color. So a lot of it took uh, just taking the leap, taking the courage to just take the first step. And then once you take that first step, you're really gonna go far. So my aim for today is to go over a few lessons that I have for specifically, a few lessons that I learned um, and fears that I overcame while getting myself to go on my first solo trip and how it was probably one of the best things I did in my life and continues to be the most um, fulfilling opportunities that I do within my life. So I hope you enjoy it. So a little background before I go into some of my fears and lessons learned. In 2019, I was turning 30. I was doing my dirty 30 and I was still in the process of getting divorced. And at that point, I uh, was not sure if I was gonna go on this trip or not. And many of my friends and family were supportive of either option or either decision that I made, but I was certainly um, very fearful. I was, and I was very lost and sad about having to go on this trip that I thought I would be going with someone else on to now going by myself. And it was about three weeks before I my trip, before I had to fly out where I just kind of had this cathartic moment where I was like, no, I'm going on this trip. And instead of just going to Singapore, Malaysia, Australia, and Hawaii, I ended up adding in uh, Indonesia as well, a little Bali life to be specific, to live a little bit of my eat, pray, love life in there. And it was fantastic. So fear number one, I'm too scared to travel by myself. Is that a real fear? Absolutely. And it's something that I had overcome quite a bit because there are multiple fears especially when you're a woman right as a young woman uh, are you going to be safe are you going to be prepared is have you done everything that you're supposed to be doing right or have you checked in you know with everywhere you're supposed to be checking in with your lodging or your plane ticket all of these things there there are so many intricacies to traveling abroad that you want to make sure that you have down pat and it's, but it's also just really scary to do it on your own if you haven't done it before, especially doing it across multiple countries. And that's something that I had to uh, make sure I, I did my due diligence on. And I've always identified as someone that was very independent and someone who um, could do everything on her own. But this was a real challenge for me. So if you are scared of going on your first solo trip, I just say take a deep breath and just take that leap. It's gonna feel like a leap because that's that's what it is, but it's going to be so much better on the other side. So it'll be a great test for yourself because it was for me and man, did I love it. You know, without a great risk, it's not a great reward, right? So hopefully you do it. Fear number two, I don't know what I do by myself. So this was very scary to me. And I kept thinking like, what are, what, you know, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna have enough to do? Am I gonna be bored? And my answer to this is do it your way. And if you do it your way, you will have so much fun. For example, I love doing things that are fancy. I'm, I love that. I love that lavish, bougie-esque lifestyle that my pocket can afford. And for my 30th, I took the liberty of doing things that I wanted to do. So I went to a fancy, I went to all fancy hotels to be honest. Like, five star mostly, I think one was like a four star, uh, and stayed in really nice places, got great treatment. Uh, I, went, I love food. And in Singapore on my birthday, on my 30th birthday, I went to my first Michelin star restaurant because I could and because I wanted to. I ate some good food all by myself and I didn't have to worry about whether or not I had to accommodate someone let me just tell you all, I'm a very accommodating person, but it takes a lot out of me. In my reflections, I was realizing that and I found so much joy and, and peace by just traveling by myself the way I want to. And another example that really, really um, made me grateful I was traveling by myself was when I was in Penang, Malaysia, and it was very hot. 
It's very hot in Panay. <laughs> and I remember thinking, what am I gonna do today when I woke up? And I was like, well, I'm gonna go walk to um, the Blue Mansion uh, and, you know, just bring an umbrella so I can, you know, and, and cover myself so, you know, if it gets too hot, I can, I can just have a little bit of shade. Oh man, I lasted five minutes walking on the route to walk over to the Blue Mansion. And I stopped and turned around and said, I guess I'm going to the pool today. And that is what I did. And I just stayed at the pool and I loved it because I was going so hard at each country and each place I was at for every day I was, I was going really, really hard. So by the time I got to Penang, I was just like, no, I'm gonna relax on this, at this beautiful hotel with a beautiful pool overlooking the fantastic ocean. So that's what I did. And I had the best time doing that. And that's something that you can do when you travel by yourself. You make your own itinerary and whatever you do is gonna be great because it's gonna be whatever you wanna do. So that is something that I say, if that's a fear, do not fear that because you will have a lot of fun so long as you do it your way. My third fear, number three, uh, when I was thinking about my first solo trip was being afraid to be lonely. And I tell you, that is one of, I think, the biggest challenges that people have. And, and it's something that we all share it because we are, are communal beings. We like being with each other. So having to travel by yourself, the loneliness could be extremely, extremely intimidating. I understand that because I, I went through that. And my family understood that too, because like I said, in my first solo trip, I had uh, been not even divorced yet, officially divorced. I was going through my divorce. It was still pending. And my family, you know, scrounged up the money to have my aunt go with me if I needed to. And I, and I had to, you know, so, so I'm so gracious to them for that. Uh, I had to talk to my aunt to say thank you so much and, and, and to my family for, for accommodating this and, and supporting me, but I, I have to do this by myself. And, and I stood firm in that, I listened to my intuition, just knowing that that was something that I needed to do. I was able to identify so clearly what it is that I enjoyed doing, not having to accommodate anyone else. I read all that I wanted to do too, and I reflected as much as I needed to at that time. And it was so healing to be able to really be in a relationship with myself and, and ask myself, what is it that you wanna do today? What is it that makes you happy? And that was, that was all that I needed. And, and I tell you, if you allow yourself to have this type of relationship with yourself every so often, I would say once a year, that's what I recommend to you all. That's what I've done for myself or that's what the commitment I've made for myself so that I can come back to myself, recharge and really reevaluate um, where it is that I, I want to be, where I want to go, what I want to have. So I, I wish that for all of you. And, and I really do hope that you embrace the solitude, not just the loneliness um, that you will find, you know, because yes, lon does loneliness happen? Absolutely. I'm not going to lie to you. Loneliness happens, but the, um, the relationship that you have with yourself, does that is the relationship that you need. It's a relationship that you're going to crave after this is all done. Because I tell you, it's addicting. And lastly, I also want to say, you will find friends wherever you go. When I was in Singapore, I was able to meet uh, these fantastic um, three, excuse me, three other um, really nice older men. They were a little bit older than my dad's age, but younger than my grandparents. And they really just helped me understand the culture better. Just having lunch together in one of the hawker stations. We just had lunch together. And that was one of the best you know, talks that I've had in all of my trips. It's just meeting you know, some of these folks organically and being open to that but also being careful. <laughs> all right, and the fourth fear that I would like to share with all of you and the lesson I learned from it is I'm fearful for my safety. I am too scared to travel by myself. And as a woman, I tell you that is very true and it goes in your mind all of the time. And to that, I would say, do your research. Do your research. When you're able to do your research, you can identify some of the places that you feel most comfortable staying. I know there's a lot of people out there that feel completely fine with traveling and staying, say, at a hostel. For me, I do not feel comfortable doing that, and nor do I want to. You know, I was, I was 30, I was like, I, I am, you know, I'm older now, but you know, it's not something that I feel like I, I want to do at this point in my life. Maybe when I was 20, I would feel a little different, but, but not um, at this point in my life. You do whatever you need to do to feel safe. 
And if you are able to arm yourself with that research of, you know, what's safe, what's not, uh, what's open, what's not, you have to make sure to, to pinpoint those, those certain aspects, your neighborhood that you want to live in, uh, that you want to stay in, the, the lodging that you want in that neighborhood, and the transportation in and around the city or the area that you're in, I think you'll be good, you know, and, and arm yourself with a little bit of, of uh, quick words, um, like, hello, thank you, um, you know, where's the bathroom? If you can arm yourself with a few words to get by, then I think you'll be okay as well, or just with a device. If you have your phone and it has a translator app, that's great. Make sure it's, you have that readily available as well, and that will be very helpful, especially in countries that don't have um, a lot of English speakers there or English signs as, uh, as well. That will be very helpful for you. So arm yourself with your research. And also, I just want to put this in your mind that in my experience, I have found so many more kind and good people, people that will look out for you when I travel solo than I have at any other point in time. Uh, I think it's also because, you know, when, when anyone sees that you're a solo woman traveling by themselves, or they'll pick you up at the airport by yourself, they're like, where are you going? Well, that can also be a little bit scary, <laughs> which is why I like to get companies that I call like through the hotel or, or um, through, through vetted sources, because it really is, uh, it, it is for peace of mind, right? But I will say, no matter where I've gone, I have found more kind people than malicious people. And I think that's just in general for the world. And just make sure that you're aware of your surroundings whenever you're out and about. Um, as a woman, I'm very careful not to take drinks from anybody, <laughs> you know, and um, I, I don't usually go out to party or anything. Cause that's just not, for one, it's not my style anymore. I'm, as I've gotten older and for another, I don't like to put myself in those precarious situations if I don't have anyone else with me. But just, just realizing that people are looking out for you. Uh, when I was in London, I remember having uh, being seated where I wanted to watch the fireworks from the London Eye and the bartender, the, the host, um, a waiter, both of them had asked me, are you by yourself? I'm like, yes, I'm, I'm by myself. And they would ask me why. And I'm like, I just wanted to enjoy the fireworks the way I wanted to. And, and that was enough for them. But throughout the whole evening, all like it's as if the waiters um, and all the hostesses all talked to each other because after that, all the bartenders were also looking after me. Throughout the night, they would ask me, how are you doing? And then at the end of the night, they're like, are you okay? Do you need anything? Do you need us to call a cab or anything? I was like, no, I'm fine. I left at the same time everyone else left to go um, to, to utilize the tube, to go back home. So I felt very comfortable and safe. Um, so it was, it was great, you know, and people look out. If ever you feel scared, make sure to know. Again, do your research. What the 911 numbers are, make sure your phone is working and that you're using reputable, reputable resources uh, whenever you're traveling. So hopefully this has been informative for all of you. Uh, I hope that this has actually inspired some of you to go on a solo trip by yourself. Think of it as a retreat, think of it, or, or not. Think of it as a vacation just for you and yourself. And I think you'll be immensely surprised if you haven't done it before with how much you like it. If you are in that season in your life where you need a, a reset, a, a moment of immense healing, whatever it may be, you don't have to be divorced, right? This is just what I found in my life that's helped me from a very traumatic situation um, that really helped me find myself in the most beautiful, quick <laughs> way. And I hope that it does for all of you. So if you have any questions, please do leave a comment below. Also, please subscribe and follow me on Facebook or Instagram. And don't forget to read my blog. All information can be found at thedivorcediaries.com. Information's below in the show notes. And thank you so much for watching.